Today is gonna be a fun build, you guys, okay? We're gonna be building a PC to play Starfield. I know I'm like a month behind, but god damn it, better late than never. Not only is this PC gonna be optimized for Starfield, but we're also gonna keep the same theme. So mostly white with red and blue accents. We even got the beautiful limited edition Starfield bundle that we're gonna be using for this build. There was only 500 of these made in the entire world. You can't buy this anywhere, you guys. I was fortunate enough to get two of them. One of them I kept for this specific build and the other one I did a giveaway on my Instagram account. How many of you guys actually participated in the giveaway? Let me know in the comment section. So this video is gonna be a little different. Um, typically I talk about PC parts as I'm building a PC, but honestly, I feel like most of you are over that format. It's just, it's overused and it's becoming very stale. So I'm gonna try something I did once before when I talked about the story of how I met my wife and most of you really appreciated that story because I was being a little more personal and I was opening up to you guys. So I'm gonna try that again. You know, aside from building PCs and setups, most of you guys don't really know who I am as a person and where I came from and how I even started all this. So I feel like we can go a little bit in the past and talk about a few things. So that's why I got my cup of coffee over here. We're just gonna chill, hang out, and build a pretty good looking system at the same time. It almost feels a shame to open up this processor box. It is such a good looking box. The graphics card is already open, so I know I'm not going to feel bad using this in the build, but the CPU, I have to cut the seal, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Feels almost a shame to cut this open. Oh, that hurt my soul. <laughs> that hurt my soul. Oh man, oh well. Oh, that is cool. That is neat. This is the first time I'm seeing the inside of the CPU box because I did not open this on the giveaway bundle. This is it, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D processor. This is one of the fastest gaming CPUs currently available in the market. It even goes toe to toe against the 13900K. And now for the graphics card. This is the second time I'm, I'm unboxing it and it looks just as good as it did the first time. Aside from red and blue, I'm actually noticing there's one other color on the heatsink, orange. But it's so subtle, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference if we just stick to white, red, and blue. I just love the amount of detail they put on this card. You have to really look closely and appreciate the tiny details all around this card. All right, do I have one small nitpick? Um, and this is just a personal opinion but I would prefer white fans instead of black because I feel like the black sticks out a little too much against the white. Um, this is just a personal preference, of course. But other than that, it's still a fantastic card. And it does surprisingly well on Starfield. In some resolutions and settings, the 7900 XTX actually performs better than the RTX 4090, believe it or not. And that's kind of expected because Starfield is an AMD title technically, so it is optimized for AMD graphics cards. So motherboard we're going with is the ROG Strix B650A gaming Wi-Fi, simply because it supports AM5 CPUs and it's in the perfect color scheme for the build and it's ASUS, which I'm sure most of you guys already know how I feel about ASUS motherboards. So I guess to start off the video, I should probably introduce myself for those who are new to the channel. Welcome, by the way, if you guys stumbled across the channel in the past few months or even this past year. My name is Edgar Oganesian. Most people can't pronounce my last name because it is an Armenian last name, but it's, uh, it's not organism, it's not orgasm, it's Oganesian. <laughs> you can always tell if that person is Armenian or if they're from an Armenian family based off the last three letters of their last name. If it ends in an I-N or a Y-A-N, most likely they're Armenian. Kim Kardashian, Dan Bilzerian, you guys get the idea. Anywho, so I'm currently 35 years old. Uh, I've been in the States for about 30 years, which means I was about five when I first came here with my family. It was just my mom and my brother at the time because my sister wasn't born. And we came to this country extremely broke. We had no money, absolutely nothing. I think we only had like $20 in our pockets. So needless to say, my mom busted her ass working two jobs and going to school part-time to learn English 
just so she can support the both of us um, all by herself. We had no dad in our life. He was a pile of crap to keep this, this story short and simple. Um, so everything my mom did, she did it by herself. We didn't have the best childhood. You know, we didn't get the fancy clothes. We didn't get any of the nice shiny consoles growing up, but you know, we were still happy because my mom did whatever she could by herself. It wasn't easy. Uh, I remember one day I heard some crying from my bedroom and it was like 2 a.m. And I um, got up and I noticed that my mom was crying in the other room. I must have been six or seven years old at the time. And I went up to her and I'm like, mom, why are you crying? She looks at me and says, we have no money. And I remember that so vividly because the next thing I did, I went to her wallet and I opened it. Oh, Christ. Only to find like $2 in there. And that was the first time in my life where I just felt so hopeless. God damn, it's not what I had in mind. Sorry guys. I thought to myself, you know, what the hell is a seven year old gonna do in this situation? Like I'm not even old enough to work to help her. And my brother was like a year and a half younger than me, so he couldn't help either. And um, I promised myself that day, I'm like one day when I'm old enough, we're gonna be in a better place and that I'm gonna take care of you, mom. So you don't have to worry or stress about paying the bills or paying the rent. So we struggled, we struggled, we struggled. Uh, several years after my sister was born, still she was by herself. Um, the only time where things got better was when I was in my mid twenties, I believe, 24, 25 ish, where I started my YouTube channel. And after the channel blew up after several years of posting like the setup wars and the cool tech content. That's when I started actually receiving a decent amount of income every month with the sponsors where I could help my mom with her bills. So really what changed our life was, was YouTube when it comes down to, when it comes down to it. Okay, we're gonna need a cooler for the build and I'm going with the Deep Cool AK620. We got dual heatsink, dual fan design. But what's really cool about this is the, um, the LCD display on the front over here. It actually shows you the temperature of the CPU, which I think is pretty cool. And of course it matches the entire color scheme. So that is always a plus for me. Oh, that's a nice cooler. That's a really nice cooler. Check this out. So there is a part of the story where I kind of left out mostly because I don't really like talking about it, but it has to do with my dad. He's been in and out of our life ever since I could remember. Um, and I don't really blame my mom for it, for constantly bringing him back because, you know, he is the father of her children. So I kind of understand where she's coming from. You know, she wants to make it work regardless of their differences. So that's kind of how my sister was born. We're all from the same father. It's not like she met someone else. But I remember the last time I saw him was I was in sixth grade. Um, I must have been 11 or 12 years old. And I remember there was a major argument where she had to call the police um, because he took our life savings and he went and gambled with it. That's the only conversation I remember vividly before the cops came and escorted him out. And since that day, I have never heard from him or seen him. And the only reason I even bring that up is because it's been well over like 23 years since I've seen or heard from him. Not once within that 23 years has he reached out to say anything. That's what just bothers me so much sometimes. You know, something would happen in life where I would remember and I would just like take a step back and like, why hasn't he done anything? You know, like, does he know I'm alive? Does he know I exist? Does he know the type of person I've become? Does he know I have two daughters? 
it's just, it's so confusing. Not that it would change anything. You know, I don't think I'll ever forgive him for what he did, but it's just that thought where it doesn't make any sense. 23 years. I'm not even like a, hey, what's up? How are you? Honestly, it is what it is. Like I've learned to live with it. Anyway, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise because I've taken that whole experience and it has taught me to become the father that he never was for my two daughters. I've taken that entire negative experience and I know what not to do because of it. So I'm always a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And that's kind of how I just been living my life, to be honest. Is this even gonna fit? Oh. Look at that, it's sitting right on the rim. Oh no. Uh, it should be fine. Oh, only one way to find out. All right, moment of truth, here we go. Oh, that was bad, that could have been bad. Forgot to remove the sticker. Oh, it's a tight fit. You know what, that's fine because we can adjust the fan in the front here. I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit so that it's not sitting directly on there. Okay, let's lift it up by like one notch. I think that's good enough. Beautiful, look at that. You know those jokes I always make on my videos where I'm like, has your dad left for milk and never came back? And I would always read like the upset comments down below saying that, hey, you shouldn't make fun of people who don't have a dad. Little do they know, I'm in the same exact boat. I would never make a joke where I wouldn't be on the receiving end as well. So I speak from personal experience. So the case we're building inside of is a Deepcool CH560WH. And I cannot give Deepcool enough credit for being so committed to the color scheme. Like everything is in the same color from the power supply shroud to the PCI brackets in the back, the fans and even the fan cables. So hats off to you, Deepcool. Also, I apologize real quick if you guys hear any baby noises in the background. My daughter, Olivia, has invaded the office. So she will be joining us for the PC build. You like the camera? You like the camera just like your sister? <laughs> you like the camera just like your sister? Whoa, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Powering the entire build is a 1000 watt power supply from Fantex. You can probably figure out why I went with this model specifically, obviously because of the color scheme, but more importantly, 1000 watts is more than plenty to power the entire system. This is actually the same power supply I'm using in both my PC and my wife's PC. It's also fully modular, but we'll be tossing in some specific colors from cable extensions to match the Starfield theme. Oh, this is gonna be a tight fit because of the hard drive cage. We can make it work. Oh yeah, plenty of space. Now that I'm looking at it, this does look a little too red, white, and blue for my taste. It's almost like a, like a United States themed build, as opposed to the cables that actually come with the graphics card. The only problem with these is that they don't have any cable combs, so it's not gonna look that good inside the system. One set has the colored cables, and then the other set is just pure white. Honestly, I think it's just better to go with this. All right, final piece, here we go.
Alright boys and girls, here we go with Starfield loaded up on the PC. We are playing in 1440p ultra settings, so we're pretty much maxed out with FSR2 enabled. We are in the main city of Alpha Centauri and we are getting in the 80s, average 80s. Average 80s, low 90s, depending on where exactly you are in the map, but that's not too bad, actually. Unfortunately, I can't even see any of the graphics card information. The only thing that shows for the GPU is the utilization. We're almost at 90%. There is no clock speeds, there is no temperatures. MSI Afterburner is not playing nice with this specific 7900 XTX for some reason. So we're gonna have to actually load up hardware info to get that. So temperatures on the graphics card right now is 68 degrees Celsius, which is really cool. It's actually still pretty crazy that even with the best graphics card that AMD has to offer, we still can't crack 100 FPS on ultra settings. That just goes to show how demanding this freaking game really is. All right, let's lower down to high, see if that does anything. Okay, here we go. Now we're finally hitting 100 FPS. So we got a, essentially a 10 to 20 FPS boost just by lowering the settings down to high. Not bad. Oh wow, we're actually doing a lot better on a different planet, you guys. Look at that, 150 FPS in 1440p ultra settings. That's pretty impressive, actually. CPU temps are also doing really well, 62C on the 7800X3D. Hundred sixty three in here. Wow. That's freaking crazy, guys. That's the most FPS I've gotten on Starfield in ultra settings. This is like the perfect PC to max this game out. But yeah, overall, very cool Starfield build. Um, very happy with the way it turned out. I think all the colors work really well together. And the cooler is pretty freaking badass. It's nice that you can see the CPU temps, but I wish there was more customization available, like adding GPU temps, or maybe even a video or GIF would have really taken this thing to the next level. But it's still a nice feature to have. But yeah, I'll drop a link to everything I talked about down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.